welcome to our life. Since we've been hit with COVID-19, our children have been struggling to continue to get the necessary learning tools to achieve success. So on today, when we return, I will have two phenomenal guests with me that will be removing the mask on what they have been doing to bridge the digital divide. So we'll be right back. Do you have less than perfect credit? Are you getting denied for loans and credit cards? Well, contact us today for your free consultation and learn the secrets of financial freedom. We can help with late payments, collections, judgments, bankruptcies, will, trust, and more. We get results. Let us help you. For more information, contact Nikki Ferguson at 281-788-9462. Hi, this is Willie Adolph of the Adolph Group at Equity House Property. I'm here today to talk to you about home purchasing. You know, a lot of times people want to know where do we start, when do we start, how much do we need to save, what our credit score need to be like, can I really move in now? And the answer is yes. The thing is, is that you want to get pre-approved first before you even go house shopping because what you wouldn't want to happen is that you find the perfect home but the bank won't qualify you for your mortgage. So always get pre-approved first. So find a good lender, which we are having a lot of resources for you on that. Second, you want to make sure that anything that's on your credit, if it's something that you can work with, let's work with it. Because everything on your credit, you know, it depends on what it is for each mortgage company. And third, once you get that pre-approval, now it's time to go house shopping. Now, Willie, what about the money, the down payment and things like that? Well, they have a lot of programs that's out there. So based on your credit, it will depend on the town payment assistance that you can receive. But we do have a lot of resources and a lot of things that can help you. And everyone with the Adolf Group will hold you by your hand and walk you through the whole process. So you can contact us at www.theadolfgroup.com or 281-451-7087. And remember, when you have will, you have a way. $100 $100 on chicken nuggets? $100 on chicken nuggets? Really? Um, how'd you get in my house? I'm with Wisdom Tax. <laughs> wisdom Tax? So you can help me with all of this? Most definitely. Looks like you need help in bookkeeping. So what about maximizing my refund? We can only maximize your refund if you get organized. Here at Wisdom Tax and Financial, we teach y'all to be free. Free. Awesome. So I can be free of these receipts. Most definitely. Please give us a call. Thank you. Can you free yourself out of my house, please? Only if you promise to give us a call. I'll give you a call. So I can be free. Wisdom Tax. Learn to be free. I am back now and I have my phenomenal first guest the number one man of Comcast, <laughs> Mr. Bryce, and I want to pronounce your last name correctly, Ken, Kenyard? Kennard. Kennard. Is that from Louisiana too? It might be. I think it My is. My father's from the Fort Worth, Dallas area, but I think it, it is. They might have come from Louisiana. Yeah, Kennard is, it sounds like something from Louisiana, but Mr. Bryce, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out today to come sit down with me and so we can talk about what you guys have been doing with Comcast since we've been stuck in COVID because it doesn't look like we're coming out of it. Oh, don't say that. Don't <laughs> say <Okay>. that. <laughs> what inspired you to go into communications? Oh, that's such a great question. For me, what inspired me to go into communications was um, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just, I was an English major mm -hmm. and I really wanted to um, do something that was going to utilize my skills, something I could do. I couldn't be a scientist. I, did, I wasn't good at math. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I wasn't either. I wasn't the best at science. I loved history and I loved reading. I love history. And I sat down with my mom and my counselors like, you were going to be something in communications, Bryce. I said, okay. And so what I was looking, I wanted to be a, a journalist. Really? A broadcast journalist. Um, and you... You have that look for it, too. Oh, well, I'll take that. Thank you. You, you do have that look. I could see him on yeah. Dateline or uh, CNN. Yeah, Brian Gumbel was the role model. Exactly. And he was like the only one. When I, I'm older than I look, right? And so, exactly. um, but 
but just I knew that I wanted to do something in communications, whether it be writing or being in front of people and television. So I'm here right now, so it looks like I'm okay for today. You good. <laughs> so I want to let some of the viewers know about you. You're a writer, eternal, and your job with Comcast is eternal affairs manager for Comcast Houston region. External affairs now. It's external affairs. But I have done a, a number of things. You know, we wear lots of hats uh, yeah. in our positions, but right now I'm external affairs manager, managing external affairs, government affairs, mm -hmm. and um, community relations. Public relations, community relations, investment strategist for the company. This is the things that you do for Comcast. So let's uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, well, we've already said what you do for Comcast, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I'm a native Houstonian. I'm a product of the Alden ISD School District, <laughs> so happy about that. Um, I went to Morehouse College in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, I lived in London for a small time and moved back to the United States, and I have just been engaged in doing community work and public relations work for about two decades, which is really? crazy to say, but um, most of my career has been um, just really in oil and gas, in education, mm -hmm. you name it, I've done it in, P in PR and comms. Mm -hmm. But um, personally, I've been on the board for the Urban League. I'm currently mm -hmm. on the board, I'm a new member on the board for the YMCA of Greater Houston. Congratulations on that. And I'm um, a former chair of the UNCF Leadership Council here in Houston. Okay. So with students returning to school and the need for internet rising, what is Comcast doing to ensure students have access? Because you guys, once we got hit in 2020 with COVID, um, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Comcast is the only one that just jumped in and tried to figure out how can we keep everything going with the kids having to be at home. Well, there were so many people that kind of galvanized to come together to ensure that all students, not just low-income students, but all students mm -hmm. had resources to learn virtually. But I'll say that Comcast, we have been um, positioning ourselves to be a leader in the space well before the pandemic, but certainly was able to use the experience we've done for the last 10 years mm -hmm. to, um, you know, uh, really uh, advance digital equity in our communities. But as a result of COVID, I can tell you that I, I and a lot of my colleagues across our company and our footprint here in Houston will have been working to make sure that all school districts have the resources that know about our Internet Essentials program, mm -hmm. which is a program that offers high-speed, reliable internet at the home mm -hmm for a very affordable price. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say the price, but it's very affordable. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's the cost of two coffees. Oh, you can right. have internet at home, and um, you also have the access to purchase a laptop for $149. And if you try to purchase a laptop, like I did for my cousin recently, they're really <laughs> expensive. They and are. So having the opportunity to purchase it for $149 is very, very um, beneficial. And you also have access to free digital literacy training classes. So it's kind of a wraparound service that we used to uh, work with community organizations um, throughout the pandemic to, they want to say, um, they have budget to fund a large number of people. Comcast, we pull together our resources internally mm -hmm. to make that happen. And so we work with a number of partners. So that's what I was getting next to, wanting to go next to in now. Uh, tell us about the partnerships to bridge the digital divide and also the safe space Comcast has created for students. Mm -hmm. The two big things that we've been focused on throughout the pandemic have been, number one, promoting our Internet Essentials program and our Internet Essentials Partnership program. Mm -hmm. That's We've done a fantastic job partnering with the city of Houston and a number of nonprofits mm -hmm. to ensure that low-income families have access to the Internet at home. Mm -hmm. It's not that I have an in-home uh, connection um, that it, it will open up things for, you know, it's almost like utility, right? Mm -hmm. um, the second thing we've been focusing on is um, partnering with community organizations to stand up what we call lift zones. Mm -hmm. And really that's um, going into a community center and um, empowering that community center with uh, Wi-Fi, robust Wi-Fi, commercial mm -hmm. grade Wi-Fi so that they can have large numbers of people, socially distanced of course, access the internet and do what they need to do. Really, it started as a need for students who, for whatever reason, say there was violence in the home or yeah. whatever the circumstances where they couldn't learn virtually in a safe place. Mm -hmm. We have partnered with a number of organizations, such as the Boys and Girls Club, to make sure that they are prepared to offer Wi-Fi at, at a fast, robust way mm -hmm. um, to, um, to any student that needed to get um, access. As a result, some Adults really need access too. So we've had some mm -hmm. adults that are looking for jobs, that are looking to get health care. Yeah. Just an, and si senior citizens, veterans that are low income. You know, we're working with just a number of organizations to make sure those populations are being um, 
um, cared for. Yeah. So we've, we're going to be soon uh, taking a break, but when we come back, I'll have the opportunity to talk to one of your partners. But before we go into that break, how do you, how do you go about choosing your partners? We really want to work with people who have a direct link to the community, mm -hmm. that are boots on the ground, grassroots, but we really don't have a, a set criteria. It's really um, a, a nonprofit that mm -hmm. has um, a designated population that they want to reach. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to provide the, the resource and the technology to help them do that. Okay. So if, you've, if you're in a sorority, if you're in a, non a nonprofit um, community organization, if you have uh, resources at your church, whatever it is, I'm sure we can probably find a way to make sure that the, the, the desire to get people connected who have not been connected before, which mm -hmm. is often the case, yeah. or people that have they're experiencing challenges financially that can't connect it. We want to take it away, we take away any obstacles that are in the community to people to make sure that have internet access. Okay. Either in the home or in the community. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick break and when we return we'll be talking to one of your community partners and then Mr. Bryce is not going nowhere. I've kidnapped him <laughs> for the day. He's going to be back with us with that partner together, and then we'll go more a little deeper into what each of them are doing in, um, in the community. And she's in the Fifth Ward community. That's correct? right, in the nickel. So, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, guys, and we'll be back with Ms. Deshar. She is one of Comcast partners, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to River and Word. Our founder is Pam Jones, and she has so much to offer to independents. River and Word magazine helps promote, support, and connect you to radio, TV, and marketers to help you be successful in the arts. River and Word recently launched the River Word Gospel Radio Station. It's a place to gain more exposure for your music or talk shows. River Health offers all natural products that may help you lose weight, gain energy, reverse the signs of aging, improve eyesight, grow your hair, and almost 40 plus benefits. For more information, visit RiverHealthNewYouLife.com. Pam Jones also has Four River Consulting for Independence, where she will guide, advise, and connect you to the resources to develop your brand. Pam Jones founded the River Awards to recognize and award the independent artists in music, dance, writing, and painting. She felt a call from God to give honor to his people. For more information, visit us at riverandword.com. The Adolf Group at Equity House Properties. We provide residential, commercial, leasing apartment locating. We provide consulting on home buying, home selling, and credit restoration. We help with private investments to all faith investment corporation. Contact us now, the Adolf Group at Equity House Properties. We make real estate your reality. And we're back now with one of Comcast's partners for to bridging the gap of community divide. Um, and we have Mr. Shara Goss yes. with us. So thank you for being here with us today. I greatly appreciate it. What inspired you to get into community affairs? 
I, I just have a love for community. I have a love for people. Mm -hmm. um, and so community really brings about a sense of home. And so I really just started to find my way as a community champion doing volunteer work, um, just kind of getting out and being a support system in my own way. So community has always been something I just had a love for. So I want to let everybody know you are the community um, manager for the Fifth Ward community. Yes, so I am the Community Initiatives mm -hmm. Manager for Fifth Ward Community Redevelopment Corporation. Uh, Fifth Ward CRC is mm -hmm. a 30 year old nonprofit that has been serving the Fifth Ward area. And we do things like uh, we do housing and real estate development. Mm -hmm. We do art and culture programming. We recently just secured the, the moniker of being Houston's newest art and culture district. So we are very, very excited to be the only designated African American American Art and Culture District here in the city. Um, and then we also do home buying education classes, financial literacy, community outreach and engagement, and disaster recovery services. So just last year alone, we were able to give over a million dollars away during COVID relief. So oh, we, we've done a great job building uh, the Fifth Ward community back up. Oh, I love all that. I, I mean, my mind is rolling. <laughs> when I was talking to Bryce too, my mind was rolling about different things. What would you say is one of the first things we need to do when trying to close the gap? When trying to close the gap, we really need to think about how are we providing access, right? So the access is where people struggle. So mm -hmm. it's not so much, um, them not having a laptop. They may have a laptop or they may have a tablet, they may have mm -hmm. their phones, but they don't have the access or the resources to pay the bill. Exactly. So when we start to think about how do we open up those options, it's how are we looking at access and affordability? Um, really making sure that kids have laptops or if they don't, they can go to their local community center or to their library or they can go back to their school campus and have computer labs or smart rooms. Um, being able to offer support as finances mm -hmm. so they can pay their bill or pay their phone bill so they can use a phone and, and connect digitally that way. Okay. Tell us about the work that you're doing in the Fifth Ward community to try to, to bridge that gap. Right now, we are partnering with Comcast on their Internet Essentials program, and so we've been able to uh, provide cable, ser cable, not cable, but uh, Wi-Fi Internet services for up to 100 families at the moment. And then we're looking and working with Comcast on becoming a possible site for their Lift Zone program, in mm -hmm. which we will be able to provide open access at some of our community centers like the okay. Hester House or the local library. Okay, okay. What more would you like to see done in the community to continue to close that gap? Honestly, um, free Wi-Fi at, at hot spots. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, that's when we start to think about some of our low-income neighborhoods. Where are they most often at? So mm -hmm. unfortunately, most of them, you know, use public transportation. So we need to provide Wi-Fi at public transportation sites, such as our bus stops or our local grocery stores or somewhere where people are kind of like our community parks. Mm -hmm. How are we um, doing? Wi-Fi towers in areas that are open when mm -hmm. people can walk down the street and easily connect. Okay, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and I will be adding Mr. Bryce to this conversation and we're going to continue to go a little bit more into between your partnership with Comcast and Comcast and what all you guys have going on in the Fifth Ward community. Awesome. Okay, so we'll be right back. Wisdom tax. Maybe I should give him a call. Oh, how did you get in my house again? Now you know I told you I'm with wisdom tax. Well, I'm glad you showed up because I think I'm ready to get started. Great. Look, I just need you to do one simple step. 
visit our website online, www.wisdomtax.org. All right, fill out the application, and we'll get back to you maybe even in the next 10 minutes. Awesome. I'm about to be free. Look, this is amazing. Yeah, you know, so what... Calls at Wisdom Tax, where you learn to be free. And we're back in my last segment, and I have the phenomenal Mr. Bryce, and I have the phenomenal Mr. Shara here with me both. So tell us about the work as a partner that you both have created in the Fifth Ward community, which whoever wants to go first. Well, um, we reached out to Comcast uh, a little over a year ago, right when the pandemic was starting, mm -hmm. to really see how could we be a provider of services, how could we assist with making sure families were being uh, connected and students were able to access the internet for school. So we've been working now, I think it's almost about seven, eight months, on the mm -hmm. Internet Essentials program with them. And then we started talking um, a little bit ago about how can we increase what we do through Comcast lift zones. I want to commend uh, Comcast oh, thank and, you and your department because you play a big part in all of that. Uh, to to step up when we went into this, I guess for most people, a culture shock, and most parents were like, "What are we going to do with these yeah. children?" And they they were out of school before everything kind of got situated with homeschooling for like a break. month. It was, yeah. It was spring break, and then the pandemic kind of really took hold. Yeah. And people were like, well, we need to do some virtual learning resources. <laughs> yeah. Before something. school ends. It was like April and May. It's like, well, yeah. wait a minute. Should we take all this time to do it? But in school, it was just kind of very unusual, unprecedented time. Very mm -hmm. much. So when I got the call from um, the Fifth Ward Redevelopment Corporation, I was like, absolutely, yes. Let, it's, let's do a partnership through our Internet Central Program. We know that there are so many students who were not getting um, the resources they needed from mm -hmm. home because mm -hmm. schools were closed mm -hmm. and they didn't have you know, imagine you just had like the run take rug taken mm -hmm. from underneath them in a sense um, and so we had to work quickly with a lot of community organizations a lot mm -hmm. of school districts and I was just delighted to get the call from the fifth water redevelopment <laughs> corporation I was like yes I love the nickel um, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's certainly be um, in touch and do what we can we can mm -hmm. to, to move quickly yeah. mm -hmm. and so Comcast in a matter of kind of really days, days. Yeah. took our Internet Essentials program, mm -hmm. you know, kind of did a little Rubik's Cube yeah, thing, and then made it into an Internet Essentials partnership program to where we could legally and successfully partner with organizations to stand up um, opportunities for young people especially to get connected at mm -hmm. home um, at no charge through, through the support of community organizations. So we're just happy that we've been able to pivot and make changes and just it really, mm -hmm. we see it from Comcast lens improving our partnerships and, and it's been an opportunity for us yeah. really we've all kind of learned things and developed new ways to reach people that weren't connected to the internet exactly and didn't think they could get it because of pricing right. or right. because for whatever reason mm -hmm. you know so that 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 is a very big blessing what's next for Comcast when it comes uh, to education and students that's such a great question, and I'm happy to share. <laughs> this is almost like an exclusive. Oh, really? <laughs> so we love our community partners um, th that have helped us grow our Internet Central mm -hmm. program and presence. But with that, uh, we have recently been awarded from the Texas Education Agency an award to provide um, Internet Essentials through um, District Region 4 right here in Houston mm -hmm. free Internet to any student that's low income in any public school district. So we'll be working with the state. They're going to um, cover the bill, if you will, mm -hmm. for any low-income student in, um, in Texas. But right here in Houston, we're working with um, District 4. Mm -hmm. So HISD is one of the largest school districts it we'll is. be working with. But that's going to help us tremendously reach um, students that were not connected um, at home for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Um, and so we're really happy about that. We're going to continue to grow our community partnerships, of course, but to reach as many people as we can. We have a goal over the next... Um, 10 years to invest $1 billion in our community, mm -hmm. spread our footprint. Houston's going to get a lot of that, mm -hmm. but really excited about the resources that, and the investments that we're, we're going to be making. And that just is one of the investments that we're doing as part of our $1 billion commitment. Congratulations. It's just really to close in the, the mm -hmm. digital divide in yeah. our community. 
And we and we need to because it's a lot of homes that you probably we would probably wouldn't think of. We think every home has a has a computer and some kind of internet service, but it's a lot that. They yeah, don't. Fifth Ward is home to over 17,000 people and 38% of them uh, did not have access to the internet. And so wow. us being able to provide these services and, and different opportunities to connect is just life changing. You know, they're able to pay bills, they're able to go to school, mm -hmm. find jobs, healthcare. Mm -hmm. All of that relies on you being digitally connected. And so having multiple ways of just being able to access, mm -hmm. it completely changes your life. So. If, if you have access to the broadband connection and you have to have a device. I, I say they exactly. go together like salt and pepper. Yeah. <laughs> and so at Comcast, we see ourselves as a convener of that. Okay. And one of the ways we're able to do that is working with fantastic community partners like you know, in Fifth Ward in this case. And we just want to um, continue to do that. Because I had to learn. Because once my job sent me home, because I, I do have a regular uh, thing that mm -hmm. I do. And <laughs> once they <laughs> sent me home, I was lost, and you would think mm -hmm. I would know these things, but I didn't. And I was like, "Well, what? They, well, you gotta have a modem. A modem? What? Is, why I gotta have a modem? I can't use the Wi-Fi on my phone." It's <laughs> like, uh, "No, that's not gonna run in my systems, and you need to get a modem." So I had to <laughs> invest in a modem and all that kind of stuff once we were sent home and not being be able to work in our office. So yeah, it was it was traumatizing in a way for many families, right? Because they they knew that they could access from their phone, but now you have uh, four kids at home, yeah. all in, in, in grade school mm -hmm. who need one, they all need their own laptops. And mm -hmm. two, they're all mm -hmm. trying to connect at the same time. So how do you how do you how do you change that? What do you need to do? So looking at providing more modems, hotspots, mm -hmm. increasing speed, all of those things we had to learn on we had to learn also our parents had to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did digital tech classes, we did parent trainings, we did mm -hmm. um, quite a bit to start to get parents up to speed on how do you how do you go digital? How do you go to tech? Um, and it's still a learning curve. Because that's the world we live in now. Yeah, yeah. Everything it is, yeah. is the, and, but when the internet came out, I said the internet is the devil. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> I still believe that the internet is the devil. But we, unfortunately, we have to have it yeah. for mm -hmm. pretty much everything we do in this day yeah. and time. So, and what? You, the skills too. You have to mm -hmm. have the connection mm -hmm. and you have to have the skills. And so that's, uh, that's a part of it that some people often forget. Um, I've come into contact with children, elderly, senior citizens, people young like myself. I'm David. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a lot of it is how you navigate the internet mm -hmm. successfully. And so that, that's just a part of it, having the access and the skills mm -hmm. training. That's what we would really um, want. That's our next piece, too. You were talking about next piece. That's the next yeah. piece of making sure that people have the digital skills to and be, be successful. And be educated mm -hmm. at, all mm -hmm. the way around. And, yeah. and I, I, I'm a big advocate in, in researching and reading and don't just go on what you see or the first thing you see. Research and make sure yeah. you're getting the correct information. I'm, I'm big on that. Uh, what words of encouragement do both of you have uh, for students and parents as we continue to deal with COVID-19? Because we're, st we're still here. For us, um, for me, really just have faith, right? Mm -hmm. Have grace. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's going through this challenging time together. It is a first for everybody. Mm -hmm. So everybody has something that they're going through right about now. So to be able to have grace and patience is is so huge because we don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. It's one minute we think we get to go back outside and the next minute we've got to go back in, you know? Yeah. And so it's just really about having faith and having patience as people continue to work through this, stay masked up, get vaccinated, do all the things that you need to do for the health and wealth of your family, yeah, you know? And then the health and wealth of others, so. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, my words of encouragement is really to um, continue to be inspired, stay inspired, and mm -hmm. to look for innovative ways to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I like about COVID, it's, it's forced everyone to be innovative and to do things, think about things differently. So mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. my encouragement is to think about ways you can be creative to do what you want to do. And start the new projects that you've been putting off. Exactly. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start the new projects you've been putting off. I want to say thank you to both of you 
for coming to sit down with me. I hope this is not the last time. I hope not. This was so great to just be able <laughs> to come and chat yeah. about some of the things that you we're definitely doing. Definitely could come back. I'm excited for Comcast and what you guys just took over and started doing when the pandemic hit. And then you took the initiative to reach out, didn't even know if they were going to tell you no, hang up the phone on you. You didn't know what was going to be said, <laughs> but they welcomed you in. Yeah, and you're bringing you're bringing a life uh, to a community that probably at that point didn't know to where do. to go when all this happened. Yeah, and you said, "Oh, okay, we got it. We we didn't got we we, mm -hmm. we got it." So I love I love that partnership. Because that's a real, true partnership mm -hmm. that, that's happening. Absolutely. So, yeah. thank, so you, just thank, thank you. So thank you to Comcast. You know? Oh, thank yeah. you. Like <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's really, it, it's a group effort. You know, we, want, we see ourselves a, as a, a true community partner, but we yeah. couldn't do the business that we're in without, you know, making sure that everyone has access. And I love when you say true community partner because you're not, you, Comcast didn't say, well, we're just going to partner with the city of Houston. You're partnering with different other entities. Mm -hmm. in that community yeah. of, of Houston, Texas. So that is really true community <laughs> partnership <laughs> to me. <laughs> That's really true community. Mm -hmm. So thank you both for being here today with me. So guys, definitely tune in. Uh, you don't want to miss out on the fantastic information that we got from Comcast and Mr. Shara today and what she's doing in the Fifth Ward community and what Comcast is bringing forth as true community partnership. But if you want to get any information on any of these guests, you can contact the Our Life TV Show at gmail.com. Always like, follow, share the Our Life TV Show. Catch us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on the On Point Network, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Xbox, AT&T Now. Until next time, guys, always empower, always encourage, pull up to the table with, our, with confidence, but without fear and continue to remove your mask.